And that was our weekly Earth Minute. And now joining us in the studio is uh, Joanne Griffith. Joanne, thank you so very much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Joanne Griffith, award-winning international broadcast journalist who has reported, produced, and hosted programs for the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, National Public Radio, and the Pacifica Radio Network. She has spent her career uh, telling stories of tragedy and triumph throughout the African African diaspora and uh, she also has been doing a show a regular show uh, for the Pacifica radio archives for the BBC radio so Joanne uh, we're glad to have you and also you found time in the middle of all of this to edit this brand new book redefining black power reflections on the state of black America amazing it's been a bit busy but been it's a- good <laughs> And you not only edited the book, you actually did the interviews in the book with a a number of notables. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, this whole project, Redefining Black Power, and it's a project, not just the book, was really born out of the phenomenal archive that Pacifica Radio Network has, the Pacifica Radio Archives. It is such a treasure trove. It is a national treasure. I, I love the fact that every week I get to share audio dating back from history with the audience in the UK. I mean, just this weekend we did a a great programme on Langston Hughes, and it's like having a history education every single week that that I go into the office. But the Pacifica Radio Archives really gave birth to this book, to this project. The director, Brian DeShazer, he wanted to find a way to take the voices that are held in the vault and actually put them in, in paper form. You know, we know that paper lasts a lot longer than, than old reel-to-reel tapes. They're up there trying to save the, the 50,000 tapes that are there. So this project came about. We decided to do a series of, of interviews, just like the ones that I do on the BBC, but a bit longer. Right. And how, how did you decide on who to interview for the book? I mean, it's it's really, I imagine that was a wrenching task. It was a really tough task. We started with a very, very, very long list of of people and literally we sat there and hit the phones and went through. Some people wanted to do it for some reasons they couldn't. Other people, you know, schedules just didn't work out. And these were the people that that we ended up with. So with Rand Jones and Julianne Malveaux and Ramona Africa, Michelle Alexander, who we interviewed literally just here across the way at at KPFK. Mm -hmm. Um, Some other people that we interviewed that aren't in the book that will be available as web content, um, Dr. Reverend Jeremiah Wright and also Malefi Asante. So it was it was an interesting combination of right. people, and but we ended up with the right ones, I think. Right. And what do you think, I mean, what do you see as the goal of the book, Redefining Black Power Reflections on the um, State of Black America? And what do you think it will contribute to black voices in the United States? The Pacifica Radio Archives, their whole reason for being and the whole reason why I do what I do is because they have been able to curate all of the voices from history, from the civil rights movement, from the black power movement, all of the black freedom fighters that you know we listen to now, Fannie Lou Hamer and Rosa Parks and various mm-hmm. other people. What Redefining Black Power does is really about gathering those voices of today. You know, Having the first elected African-American president is not just significant for African-Americans, but for black people throughout the world. And what we wanted to do is for, have a, a marker, a place in history, a collection of voices, the black perspective of what it meant to be African-American or someone from the African diaspora in the age of Obama. So it's about collecting voices for history. It's about making sure that our voices are heard within this, this age, but also giving people an opportunity to have their say. It's not just about the people that are in the book. We did a series of roundtable conversations that you were part of, Margaret, mm-hmm. right back at the beginning in 2009. And the website now will allow people to have their say. You know, they can send in videos, they can send in audio clips, they can send us blog contributions. So that will remain online forever. Whoever's looking at searching Obama in the future or Obama and African Americans, hopefully they'll stumble across Redefining Black Power and see what everybody had to say, not just the intellectuals, not just the politicians, but everybody. Right, and as a relatively recent, I say underscore relatively recent immigrant to the United States, people could hear from your accent, you spent some time in England. Not from these here parts. (laughs) Yeah, with your roots in Barbados. I met your mom, it was lovely to meet her the other day. But as a relatively recent immigrant to the United States, what did you learn about the U.S. in the process of doing the book? You know what I mean? 
I don't know. I mean, I've always been pretty steeped in, in American culture. You know, my background is in American politics. That was what I did my degree and my master's in. Um, I spent a lot of time here. Um, I actually met my husband because I went to, to find out more about Dr. Martin Luther King for a documentary that I was that I was making. So it's not necessarily that I learned anything new about um, about America. I think what I did learn is that there are so many similarities between what's happening in America, what's happening in the UK now. Um, you know, obviously we saw the riots in the UK um, back over the summer and people are restless. People are realizing like, look, if you want some change, you, you got to pick up your banner. You got to pick up your voice. You got to pick up your feet and do something. You can't wait for someone else to do it. So I think it was more about, for me anyway, about the similarities between us all, as opposed to necessarily learning anything that, that I didn't know or hadn't felt in some way before. Right, and, and getting into the book, because there's an event coming up we want to talk about, and one of the people you uh, talk to is Vincent Harding, and I'd like you, first of all, for people who are not familiar with him, to just give us a sentence or two about him, but I was interested in the interview you did with him where you ask him to give an explanation of when it said the movement for the expansion and deepening of democracy in America. So tell us about Vincent Harding and, and what was that discussion like? Dr. Vincent Harding is, is one of those people that everybody should know. Um, it's funny, he actually has roots in Barbados too, so it seems that all roads well, can I tell you? <laughs> lead back to this tiny <laughs> island. <laughs> 14 by 21 miles and I lead back to the little village that I'm from in Barbados. Right, okay. small, but, small but mighty. Um, but Dr. Vincent Harding um, was a brother at arms with, with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was one of his speech writers. Um, he actually helped to write um, Beyond Vietnam, his, his kind of anti-war um, speech um, back in 1967. Um, he's the founder of Veterans of Hope. Literally, he spent his whole life dedicated to the betterment and improvement of not just African Americans. With Dr. Vincent Harding, his whole thing is, is that, listen, all oppressed people need to do better. All oppressed people need to have representation. Um, the conversation with him, honestly, I think was one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. um, he's like... Why is that? He's like a grandfather. You know, it, it's that kind of, okay, I'm going to hold your hand. You asked me this, <laughs> but you really wanted to ask about that. <laughs> you know, and it's, I went in, I had done all this preparation. I'd read these books and these articles and none of it. And he set you straight. He, he was like, okay, you think you're going this way, Missy, but we're going over here. And really, I mean, th that interview was, it was the first interview that I did for the yeah. book. It was September 2009. And it really set the tone for the rest of the project because yeah. he got me to think about words and definitions and like we talk about, I think sometimes very glibly we talk about the civil rights movement and as almost as this kind of catch-all. Yeah. And he said, well, no. He said, whenever you say civil rights movement, I'm going to hear the movement for the expansion and deepening of democracy. And it just stopped me in my tracks when he said that. Because well. I was like, well, what do, what do you mean? <laughs> And you know, there's a full explanation in the book. In you the, have to the go book. To you, the book. you got, yeah, you got it because I, I will not do it justice. <laughs> but it just really got me to think about, you know, it's not we're not just talking about a particular moment in time. We're talking about this evolving and continuing work that manifested itself at one point in the civil rights movement, but has now moved on to something else. You know, we're talking about the Occupy movement, and in years to come, there will be more movements. But it's the fact that. Everything continues. We are all responsible for moving that conversation forward. We're all responsible for our brothers and sisters. We're all responsible for being the change that we want to see. We can't leave it in the hands of somebody else. Right, and speaking of the Occupy movement, just some breaking news uh, coming in. According to the Occupy DC tweet, uh, the police in Washington DC wants the tent of dreams down and there's an emergency general assembly at noon to decide how to proceed there being threatened with arrest there so we're following uh, that story and our guest is in studio joanne griffith she is the editor of this brand new book redefining black power reflections on the state of black america and uh, before we talk about the event for the la launching of the book
book, you know, your, your Michelle, your discussion with um, Michelle Alexander, uh, well known to our audience of, of course, um, of her book about the new Jim Crow and the prison industrial uh, complex. Um, you talked with her about Claudette Colvin. Colvin, tell us, first of all, who she, you know, a lot of people don't know about her role and the role of lesser known figures in the civil rights movement. Yeah, and that was something that um, that Michelle in particular was very, um, very passionate about. She said, mm -hmm. you know, and, and she held her hands up, you know, as a civil rights advocate, as a, um, you know, as a lawyer, how we sometimes want to choose the, the, the people who would are most acceptable, the yeah. people who would appear, um, who would have favor with others outside of, of our community. And we all know the story of, of Rosa Parks and mm -hmm. her sitting down on the bus, That's right. um, which led to the Montgomery bus boycott. But there was actually someone prior to Rosa per Parks, um, Claudette, that we don't hear about. And, you know, I think, she, if I remember correctly, she was the one that I think she, she'd had a child out of wedlock. And there was actually someone else as well who wasn't accepted, be, um, you know, as someone to use as a test case because, like, her father um, was an alcoholic. And she just wasn't that's seen Mary to be... That's Mary Louise Smith that, was that's the other it, one. Yeah. Yeah. She just wasn't seen to, deemed to be the right kind yeah. of black person. But Rosa, you know, she had a job. She was an upstanding citizen. She didn't have any scandal behind her. Mm -hmm. and, and Michelle was like, you know, we have to make sure that we don't put these people in the shadows because just like Vincent Harding talked about, that movement for the expansion and deepening of democracy, it's not just individuals that do this, it's all of us along the way. So Claudette and Mary and Rosa and everybody else since then have played their role. So it was really important for Michelle and, and for me to make sure that those names were recognized, that if people hadn't heard them, at least now they can put a name and go and look it up. Go yeah. find out about these people. <laughs> Absolutely. And tell us, I mean, a lot of uh, you, people just have to get the book. I mean, it's not only Dr. Vincent Harding and Michelle Alexander, but also Dr. Julian Malvo, uh, Ramona Africa, the journalist Lynn Washington. I've interviewed Lynn uh, quite a bit of time on, on Mumia in, in particular. Van Jones and the Politics and Green Activism. And, uh, you know, fascinating discussion on the First Lady and the fact that there is now a black woman you know in the in the White House but I want you to tell us about this event that's coming up here in Los Angeles uh, where the book will be launched but you'll be discussing a very specific topic yes yeah so LA we're, we're, we're starting it here you know the book started <laughs> here so we're gonna have the first event here um, we're, we're going around the country continuing this conversation so at each event people will have an opportunity to record videos and record audio and take part in these conversations. So here in Los Angeles, Thursday, February the 2nd, um, at Esawan Books, um, 7 till 9 p.m. The conversation in Los Angeles is about education, so race and education in the age of Obama. Um, that was one thing I, you know, I really wanted to have an educator as part of the book, and you know that just didn't work. So it was like, well, we, we do it afterwards because education is always changing, the conversation is always changing. Yeah. Um. So our two guests, our two panel guests, we have Dr. Shani Bayard. Um. She's the executive director of an organisation called Message Media Ed. Um. And she does a lot of work breaking down racial stereotypes. Um. In the media. Um. So it's kind of message media education is what she does. She does a lot of work with. Um, teaching elders um, how to be media aware, how to be media literate, um, youth as well, how to be media literate, how to conduct themselves on Facebook and Twitter and to really think about when they watch TV programs or see adverts, what does it mean, what are the messages that they're being told and how they can begin to, to counteract that. Um, we also have um, Chris Hickey, he's the Executive Director of Eat What Eat. Each one, teach each one. one. I've got to put my teeth in to, to say that one. And I had a great conversation with him just last night, and he's like totally fired up. We were talking about, you know, how the children who are young now, who are 11, have never known, they've only ever known one white president and one black president. And we were saying that it's going to be interesting how, especially for young black boys now, who see this black man in the White House, how it's going to manifest in 10 years' time. Are they going to feel like, well, I can do anything. Like, there's a black man in the White House. White House and, you know, so all the, the, those are the kind of conversations that we're going to be having. We want the educators to come out, um, talk about, you know, what's going on in your schools, what solutions um, you're, you're looking for, how we as a community can start to help our youth in education and amongst us all. We're not just going to sit there and talk about the book. We want everyone to come out, 
it's your chance to have your say and also it's the solutions we want to it's about solutions, solutions. It's about and, and tell us again where and when the event will be yeah thursday night february the 2nd 7 p.m at sa1 books in Le Mert park again dr shani Bayard. And, and where can people get information? They yeah, can you go. can get information and um, go to redefiningblackpower.com, redefiningblackpower.com. If you're on Facebook, just type in Redefining Black Power and all of the events um, here in Los Angeles and elsewhere will come up. And also join the Redefining Black Power page all on Facebook, Redefining Black Power. Well, on that note, um, Joanne Griffith, the editor of Redefining Black Power Reflections on the State of Black America. Thank you so very much for joining us in the studio, and we'll have you back here on Sojourner Truth. All righty, we are out of time. Today's show produced by Margaret Prescott. I'd like to thank our engineer, Teddy Robinson, and the entire Sojourner Truth team, Teresa McGee, Eric Doyle, Sammy Mongello, assistant producer, Sarah Shakur. You can follow us on Twitter at So True Radio and become our Facebook friend. Look for Sojourner Truth Radio. I would love to hear from you. You can email me at mpkpfk at gmail.com. If you'd like a copy of today's show, please contact the Pacifica Radio Archives at 1 800 730 or go online to pacificaradioarchives.org. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for Uprising. This is your host, Margaret Prescott, Sojourner Truth. We'll be back on the air tomorrow morning. And now we run out.